Say we have a long solenoid of length L1 with N1 number of turns and say the coil area is A1. Now there's another tiny solenoid inside, so let me uh, make this transparent and show it to you. Let's say there's a tiny solenoid inside, which is coaxial, they have the same axis, and it has A2 area and two number of turns, and it has a length L2. Now if that sec tiny solenoid is carrying a current I2, and let's say it's changing, then there will be an EMF induced in the larger solenoid, we call this mutual induction. And we've seen before that that EMF induced in the larger solenoid depends upon the mutual inductance of the larger solenoid. And our goal in this video is to calculate just that. So our goal in this video is to calculate the mutual inductance of the larger solenoid with respect to the smaller solenoid. And a quick spoiler, it's going to be a nightmare to try and directly calculate this and we'll see why, but we will find a quick, a simpler way of figuring this out. So I hope I've gotten you pumped up. Okay, but before we begin, a quick recap of mutual induction. So the EMF induced in the larger coil, E1, that can be written as negative mutual inductance of the larger coil with respect to the smaller coil times the rate of change of current in the smaller coil. That's the whole idea, right? And if you are not familiar with this equation, feel free to go back and check out our previous videos on mutual induction. Now, my question is how do I calculate this? Because that's what I want to figure out. So what I like to do is, since this is a constant, we can put it inside the differential equation. We can put it inside the differential, right? So let me go and do that. So it's the same equation, but why did I do that? Because I remember from Faraday's law, EMF induced in any coil should equal negative rate of change of flux. And so this means this quantity should represent flux. Flux through which solenoid? Well, since I'm calculating EMF through the outer solenoid, this should represent the total flux through the outer solenoid. And so now I can say that the total flux through the outer solenoid should equal the mutual inductance of the outer solenoid with respect to two times the current in the inner solenoid. And so if I can calculate what the flux through the outer solenoid is, the magnetic flux is, I can plug it in and I can figure this out. And I also want to remind you a shortcut way of remembering this is connecting this with momentum. Just like how momentum, which is mass times velocity, is something that objects hate changes in. They like to continue their state of motion. They like to continue their momentum. We can say coils hate changes in flux. So flux is like momentum. And so mass is the inertia over there. Here inductance represents the inertia of the coil. There we talk about speed of the objects here. Current represents, loosely represents the speed of charges we can say. And so if we were calculating the flux due to its own current, say if this was I1, then this would have been self-inductance. When we calculate the flux due to the current in the other solenoid, that's what we're doing here, here, that's when you get mutual inductance. So let's go ahead and calculate the flux. So how do you calculate the flux? Well, you've seen before, if you have a nice flat area through which you have a uniform magnetic field which is perpendicular to that area, then the flux through that area, the magnetic flux, just becomes the product of the magnetic field and the area. And if there are n such turns, then you just multiply it by n. But the big question is, is our magnetic field uniform? Well, let's find out, let's find out over here. So who's generating the magnetic field in this case? It's the tiny coil. And uh, we have to calculate the flux through the big solenoid, right? So let's go ahead and see what the magnetic field looks like. What do you think the magnetic field looks like everywhere? Well, we know inside the solenoid, the field will be pretty uniform, but as it comes outside, it'll be nice and diverging. And so here's what it would look like, something like a bar magnet, and you can immediately see the problem. The magnetic field is not uniform everywhere. So let me get rid of this coil, because now we'll just focus on the larger solenoid, because that's where we need to uh, concentrate our flux on. So if I just for a moment dim this coil so we can completely focus. Notice if you now try to calculate flux through any of these coils, the field is not nice and uniform. Let me give you some example. If I take a coil somewhere over here, maybe we'll get some nice uniform field because it is at the center of the inner solenoid and the field is uniform near the center. But if I take another coil somewhere up here, the field here is not uniform. So the calculating flux over here will be very complicated. I'll have to integrate and stuff. If I take another example somewhere down here, look, 
Again, the field is incredibly complicated. I'll have to integrate. So calculating the total flux, can you imagine how much work that would be? I, I don't even have any idea of how, where I would begin. In other words, this looks mathematically impossible for us. And that's why we will not do that. This is a living nightmare. It's a mathematical nightmare. We can't calculate this. So what do we do? Do we give up? We've hit a roadblock. No, we don't give up. There is one amazing thing about mutual inductance. M12 is always equal to M21. Meaning the mutual inductance of the larger coil with respect to smaller coil always equals the mutual inductance of the smaller coil with respect to larger coil. So what we can do now is instead of passing a current through the smaller coil and calculating the flux to the larger coil, let's do it the reverse. Let's pass current through a larger coil and find the flux through the smaller coil. And now you might ask and you should ask, well, how does that help? Wouldn't that also be complicated? We'll look at that in a second. But before we do that, can you try writing a new equation now, an equation for calculating flux in the secondary due to the current in the primary in terms of the mutual inductance? Can you write that equation yourself first? All right, so that new equation will be very similar. Now it would be we're calculating flux in, total flux in the secondary, and that would be mutual inductance due to the secondary, basically the the tiny coil to the tiny solenoid due to the large solenoid multiplied by the current in the larger solenoid. This time we are putting the current in the larger solenoid. Let's, so let me redraw that circuit, uh, the setup over here. Here we go. Now we're gonna put the current through the larger solenoid, we'll call that I1, and we'll calculate what the flux to the smaller solenoid is going to be. So how does that help? Well now the magnetic field will be generated by the larger solenoid, right? So let's look at what that field is gonna look like. Here goes, ta-da. Now we see something very similar to what we saw earlier. The field is nice and uniform inside and it tends to diverge as we go towards the edge. But the thing is, the smaller solenoid is well within the center of the larger solenoid. So if I concentrate on the flux that we're calculating over here, now it will be much easier. Again, let me help you focus on that. Since we're calculating flux through the second solenoid, let me dim the larger solenoid for a while. And you immediately see how nice and uniform the field is through each coil. Again, let me show you some examples. If you were to take some bottom coil over there, field is nice and uniform and perpendicular to the area. So I can just do B times A over here. I take any other coil, again, field is nice and perpendicular. Even the topmost coil is well within the center and again, the field is nice and perpendicular. So here, the flux will just be B times A through each coil. And so the total flux would just be the number of turns multiplied by B times A, NBA. So here, flux calculation is much, much easier. And so we'll calculate what M21 is. So now would be a nice time to again pause the video and see if you can calculate the rest of the stuff. We know the flux will be just N times B times A. We know the number of turns. We know the area of the coil. All we need to know is figure out what the magnetic field is. And we have seen that before. This is the magnetic field due to uh, the larger solenoid. We know the properties of the larger solenoid as well. And we have derived that expression before. So can you put it all together and see if you can figure out what the mutual inductance M21 turns out to be? Pause and give it a shot. Okay, so the total flux through the small solenoid is going to be just NBA. So which N are we talking about? Is it N1 or N2? Well, we're calculating the flux through the smaller solenoid. So it's the number of turns of the smaller solenoid. So it's gonna be N2 times B, this magnetic field, who's generating that magnetic field? Hey, that magnetic field generated by the larger solenoid, which I have like dimmed over here, but it's generated by the larger solenoid, right? So that's the, let's call that B1 times the area. Whose area are we taking? Is it A1 or A2? Well, I'm calculating the flux through each coil of the smaller solenoid. So I am calculating A2. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So. If you, if you ever get confused whether it's two or one, it's easy to get confused. Just keep thinking about wh which solenoid, which flux you're calculating and we'll be fine. So that's going to be M21, something that we need to calculate, times the current I1. All right, so the only thing we need to figure out now is what's the magnetic field and we've derived that before, so let's quickly try and do that. So it's gonna be B, well, what's the expression for magnetic field? Well, we've derived earlier from Ampere's law, magnetic field at the center of a solenoid or inside uh, a long solenoid is gonna be mu naught times N times I divided by L. So which N is this? Well, this is the number of turns of the solenoid that's generating the field. 
who is generating the field? It's the bigger solenoid. So this should be N1. So let me call this N1. And which current is this? This is the current who's generating the field. And that's larger solenoid is generating the field, so this will be I1. So this will be I1 times A2 equals M21 times I1. And notice the current cancels out. And we have our final expression. So let me just make some space. So let me put this up a little bit. Okay. So what's our final expression? So we get M21, the mutual inductance of the secondary, or the smaller coil, smaller solenoid with respect to the larger solenoid, that's going to be, let's see, we get a mu naught, we'll put that over here, times N1, times N2, times A2, divided by, oh, whose length is this? Is it L1 or L2? What is the length of the solenoid that's generating the field? In our case, the bigger one, so it's L1. So this would be divided by L1, and there we go. That's the expression for mutual inductance. It's basically, now you can see what it depends on. It depends on the number of turns of both of them, it depends on the area of the smaller one, because that's where flux matters, and it depends on the length of the larger one because of the field that's generating. None of this is pretty obvious, and I don't expect you to remember any of this. You can always derive it in your head. But what's important is, M21 is the same as M12. This is exactly the same as M12. We'll not prove it, but it happens to be true for any two coils, regardless of how complicated the system is. And so, which means we have answered our original question. So I guess the big takeaway over here is whenever you are asked to calculate the mutual inductance between a couple of pair of coils or a system of coils, doesn't matter what they've asked in the question, you always pick the equation where the flux calculation is the easiest where it's the flux, where the field is gonna be nice and uniform over the entire area. Because M12 will always equal M21. For a given pair of coils, you only have one value of mutual inductance.